But welcome back to Shropshire Business Live TV. It's time for our final Ask the Expert slot of our first episode of this series. And I'm delighted to welcome Alex Hyde from WR Partners to the studio. Hello. Great to see you. Thank you for coming and making your debut on, on the show. Your working background, just looking at your CV, is very interesting, isn't it? Because your previous life is now helping you to particularly inform what you need to do with your current life. So That's right. Tell me a bit about yourself. Okay, so um, for most of my working life, I worked as, at HMRC as a VAT officer. Um, I saw a number of different businesses and a number of different VAT issues over the course of my lifetime there. But um, back in 2020, HMRC were going through a restructure and um, closing some of the smaller offices, offices, and I made the decision to leave and to see what else was out there. So VAT specifically was your thing, was it? Absolutely, so, so yes. Is that what you always wanted to do? <laughs> oh, no. I, I, I didn't know anybody at school <laughs> when I was coming out saying, I, I want to work in the VAT office. I don't think anyone ever grows up wanting no. to work in the VAT office. No, when I, um, I saw an advert for customer services advisor and went through numerous um, interview stages. And at every stage I asked, what would I do? And I was just told you'd be talking to people. And it wasn't until my first day when I walked into the office and was told you're in the VAT department that I realised what I'd let myself in for. And at first I said, no, I'm not interested. But they convinced me to stay. They gave me a year long training programme and they gave me a really interesting 18 years. Career. Which I think must have been you wouldn't have stayed that long. That Absolutely. Long and in terms of the job, by the time you left it to the job when you started it, how much had things changed? Over it that was time? very different. When I started, I started at HM Customs and Excise. And whilst I was there, we joined with the Inland Revenue and became H HM Revenue and Customs. Mm. And so a lot of the processes changed. We tried to do um, joined up working where I'd got with other tax officers from other tax heads, which was interesting. Um, but my baby was that. I always, mm. the only thing I ever really enjoyed doing was that. And that's where I stayed for the 18 years. So tell us specifically then about the role that you've taken on at WR Partners. Then. Well, that's what's so brilliant about the role at WR Partners. I get to stay within my comfort zone. I get to stay within VAT. And I'm a VAT um, consultant for WR Partners. So instead of going out to businesses and looking at the compliance aspect, I can now look and see how we can help them um, whilst maintaining the VAT obligations with HMRC. But I can have a look and see what, how they can work within the guidance to maximise the business efficiency. So it's very, it's, I mean, it's really useful for the fact that you're coming at it having sat at the opposite end of the, of the chain, don't you? You know what the folks who are now at HMRC are going to be looking for. If there's any boxes that need ticking, things that tend to get overlooked, alarm bells Absolutely. that might be raised. So. And that's one of the advantages I can bring to customers at WR Partners is that if they do have a VAT inspection from HMRC, I can deal direct with the HMRC officer. I, I know what they're looking for. I know how they're approaching the inspection. And if things do go wrong, I know the penalty process inside out and I can help advise on that as well. And it, are we to presume that HMRC are now going to increasingly become a bit more vigilant over the next few months? You know, during COVID, everything was very unorthodox. Personal visits, face-to-face -face inspections, it was more difficult, wasn't it? But is this the time now where it's going to be ramped up back to what it was before? Absolutely. Well, I worked at HMRC during COVID and literally in March 2020, that stopped. We were told to stop all visits for obvious reasons. Uh, we were moved on to different work and VAT was very much put on the back burner. Now that's changing, now COVID's receive it, receding and they're um, likely to ramp up the visits. I can't say for certain because I've left in the meantime, but looking at the fact that we've had this two year hiatus really from VAT, HMRC are going to start ramping, ramping up the inspections mm. again and looking to, to make sure that the returns put in in that period were correct. Is there a concern then that over the two years that we've just had, maybe we might have got a little bit more like today's call slapdash, corner cutting, is that? Quite possibly. Um, so VAT is um, known as a self-assessed tax. So it's down to the business owner to get it right. But obviously, if you've not got big brother looking over your shoulder, not to remind you to get it right, then things do slip in, in a business. There's so many things to be aware of. If you're not keeping on top of the VAT, if you've got other priorities, the VAT may slip a little oh. bit. And that's the worry, really. So that's why what we're trying to do at WR is just to remind people that even though HMRC aren't breathing over the shoulder, they do need to be aware and to still meet their VAT obligations. So tell me a bit about these VAT health checks that you're looking to promote for businesses then. Absolutely. So what it's a new service we're offering at WR. And what we'll do is I will go out to a business and I will conduct basically a VAT inspection like I used to do when I worked at HMRC. 
but without the threat of penalties looming over the business. I can, so I'll do an order to the records, make sure that the, dec the previous declarations were correct or the current declaration, make sure that the figures they want to put in are accurate. Um, and what we can do, there's two outcomes. One outcome is the, the happy outcome in that the business has peace of mind that I don't find any errors. The business has peace of mind that the returns are, are accurate. Um, the other outcome is that I do find some mistakes, but this gives the business a chance to rectify these mistakes now rather than being found by HMRC. So if HMRC finds an error, then the level of penalty is higher than if a business voluntarily discloses or changes the return of their own accord. It's, I guess it's like anything, isn't it? If, if, if the authorities can see that businesses are trying to rectify, trying to do things properly, understanding the importance of abiding by the rules, they take a completely different approach to you, don't they? That's quite right, yes. So by doing it this way, we think we're going to help businesses mm -hmm. to make sure that they're meeting the obligations and if not, they can alter the returns. So how long would that involve you typically going into a business to dive into what they're up to? So it'll be no more. It depends on the size of the business. But for a smaller business, it'd be no more than three to four hours. Mm -hmm. A larger business, I might be there a full day, um, depending on what, what strands they've got and what I need to look at. But it's very much working in the background and taking a look through just for that day. And then I'll produce a report and let them know exactly what I've done um, so they can see. But it's just... It'd be quite quick in and out really it won't be weeks they won't have have us hanging out there so what well, in, in broad terms then you know why why is the vat system good for business how does it work how do you sell it to a company i mean it, if reports are to be believed our politicians are considering all sorts of different rules and regulation changes over the next few weeks which may or may not i guess impact on VAT. quite possibly so in its simplest form i think vat is very good for businesses a good business needs to keep track of the sales the purchases and what's going on in order to grow the business and so by having the VAT obligations that in a way focuses the business owner's mind so they can because they have to meet these obligations they're automatically keeping the records that they need to keep for the business to succeed um, and with VAT the business owner charges the VAT onto their customer and so they charge their price and add VAT at 20 percent currently onto the customer and this is the amount they pay over to HMRC so they're not paying the VAT they're just passing it over um, but on the plus side, with any purchases they buy that qualify, they can recover the VAT from HM HMRC on those purchases. So that will help them as well. Do, is, does the flat rate VAT scheme still exist for some smaller businesses? Because that, that, if you're worried about the amount of paperwork involved, that can help, can't it? It does, absolutely. So um, under that scheme, rather than paying VAT at 20% on your sales and reclaiming it on your purchases, you pay a lower rate, a flat rate on your sales. And it depends on what, which business sector you're in. Um, but you don't recover any VAT on your general day-to-day -day purchases. You can recover if you have a large capital item, mm. um, but if it's just a general day-to-day, -day, you don't. And it, as you said, it does. It makes the um, paperwork a lot more simple for businesses dealing with it. So it's a very good idea. It's for smaller businesses, though. Large businesses can't take advantage. No, no, no. Is there a ceiling, in terms of turnover ceiling? For there that is. Sort? I think it's 500,000. Right, yeah. Are there typical pitfalls then? that businesses tend to fall into and that, you know, when you go into a company, will there be two or three places that you'll always look first? Absolutely. Um, a big, um, when I worked at HMRC, a big one to look at was always your input tax reclaims. They, you're, in order to reclaim VAT, you've got to have a valid VAT invoice from your supplier. Mm. So if you haven't got that, and it's, if, if you haven't got the invoice or it's not dated, um, sorry, it's not addressed to the business, mm then you can't recover the VAT. If it's not for a business item, you can't recover the VAT either. So that was always a big thing you would check when you go out as an office to make sure that what was being recovered mm. was allowed. So that's sometimes maybe personal purchases trying to be put through the business, Absolutely. so to speak. Yes. So, so, so as you say, being up front and straight with these kind of processes, it helps just make you a more efficient business. Quite right. Operationally yes. across the board. Then, Absolutely, so. yes. So you're expecting really to be enjoying a lot of the things that you enjoyed for the last 17, 18 years still but looking at it from a different perspective at WR. It is absolutely. That's one strand is the VAT health check. What I'm also um, happy to do is to look at any VAT queries that um, clients have. And I love researching all the different nuances of VAT. That's what keeps me interested. So if anything comes through that I don't know, I sort of, I know my way around HMRC manuals. I know where to find the answer if I don't know the answer, which is really helpful as well, I think. What, what do you, I mean, crystal ball time and all that, what do you think is going to maybe happen with the, the whole VAT system over the next few months? Well, there's certainly big changes, been big changes recently because of Brexit in terms of importing and exporting with VAT. Um, and over the next few months, I don't know. I think 
the rate is going to stay, I would guess, relatively stable for the time being. Um, in terms of going forward, who can say? It depends what happens, especially now we've got a new Prime Minister. We don't know what's going to happen. No, absolutely. And, and measures like interest rates to control inflation, it's all the tools you used to use that you know, my fundamental understanding of economics, they don't seem to apply at the moment, do they? Everything so. seems to be up in the air, I think. Mm. I think we're in a very strange time, certainly following the COVID pandemic as well. It's a big area of change. and I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens. So, OK, so companies watching this thinking, right, yeah, I need Alex to come and sort me out. How do they find you? What do they do? How do they book in, in a slot with you? So, as I said, I work for WR Partners. You can contact me um, via the email. If you go onto the WR website, there's a whole section dedicated to VAT now, and my contact details are on there. Um, I think there's a direct line number for me. You can give me a call, and I can arrange to come out and see you, or I can just, if you drop me an email, I can answer any queries. Fabulous. Great to see you. Thank you for coming in. I think I can safely say I've never interviewed anybody who smiled so broadly about the subject of VAT. <laughs> Absolutely. Not many people do. <laughs> well, there you go. You must come back. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you.